Okay, look, this is the one and only time we're getting middle school and high school together, aside from our worship nights. We're doing it in here because we want it to feel kind of close and kind of fun. So I know there's a lot of you in here that didn't go to go, get to go to camp, and there's a lot of you in here that did get to go to camp. So we don't want you to feel like you missed out for those of you who didn't go, so we're bringing camp here tonight. Does that sound good? So those of you that were there, hey, bring it your all tonight. We're gonna, we open up the front so you can dance like you're crazy. I'm gonna be dancing like I'm crazy, but this is a chance for you to worship God and do it. So let me give you the quick run through for tonight. We're gonna sing some songs. We're gonna do some cool stuff, and then we're gonna give you a chance to share. For those of you that did go to camp, I'm gonna let you come up here and share anything that God puts on your heart. What's something that he told you? What's something that he's challenged you to do? What's something you learned about yourself? What's the best thing that happened to you this weekend? We just want you to feel like you can come up and speak and say something. You don't have to be long, it doesn't have to be short, it can be whatever you want. And then um, we'll go back to sing some more songs, then we'll open up the floor again for you guys to share. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, so we're going to do that in just a second, but before we do, i got a couple announcements for you, okay? Next week, or two weeks, or three weeks, actually the very last weekend in October, is we're doing a special outreach thing. So here in middle school, we're doing Choctoberfest. In high school, you guys are doing dinner in a toga. It's a crazy, cool murder mystery party that we'll be having. So be putting that in the back of your mind, you have four weeks until that time. Does that sound good? But tonight we're going to worship, we're going to have fun, we're going to sing to God all that he is and all that he's doing in our lives and through you into our schools. Does that sound like a plan? So for those of you that went to camp, man, let God start stirring your heart like he did this weekend. Feel bold and courageous to share what he's put on your heart will give you a chance to sing, okay? So stand to your feet, run to the front, let's worship God with all we got. Here we go. Keep the loop
heart. Let me pray for us for a second. God, we thank you so much that you are God. We thank you that you're our Lord. We thank you that you hear us when we sing and that this doesn't just bounce off the walls, but it actually goes into heaven. It gives you glory and it gives you honor and it allows you to see us. You always see us. You see us in the darkest moments that we're dealing with right now. You see us in the mountaintops. You see us in all the in-betweens. You see the things that we don't think that you see. As I got tonight, as we celebrate the things that you've illuminated to us over this weekend, for those of us that got to go to camp, the things that you've challenged us to, that you've spoken to us to do. God, would we not be scared or timid, but would we be bold and courageous about the things that you've laid on our hearts? Would we speak with boldness and confidence that we are not walking out alone, but that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses as we profess and proclaim your name? It's in your name that we pray, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hey, you guys can have a seat for just a second. We're going to continue worshiping, but one of the ways we want to continue to worship is through story. And so I don't know what fall camp was like for you, but for me, it was a pretty cool weekend, right? I mean, you guys had a good time, right? And yeah, that's great. And so I wanted to give you a chance to share, any one of you, high, low, anything in between, what has God called you to? What has God challenged you with? What's something he spoke to you? But... I mean, I know for a lot of you, you heard some big things from God, and I feel like they shouldn't just be kept in a box, but to be shared with the rest of us. So who wants to come up and share some takeaways, some exciting moments from camp? Right here. Come on up here. You, you want to come down here? Less steps. Better for your cardio. You can do it later. Here you go. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Isabella. Some of you might know me. I go to, I go to school with you, and you, and you, and you. Um... So, something I thought about at fall camp, there's no jokes about Jesus. He sees all your acts. <laughs> but in all seriousness, what had been talked about at camp was resistance. And all of that really touched me to the point I'm thinking about getting saved today, actually. So... So fall camp was an experience I will never forget. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ricky. Some people may know me, but um, but um, the main experience that happened in fall camp is um, that um, I learned that some people can be fake not be what they really see and um, that really um, got into my heart and um, I feel like I've, I've asked my uh, church to be, I've been saved by Jesus so um, that's a big thing and uh, God sees all of our actions so that's probably my favorite part of Fall Camp. Hi, uh, my name's Charlie, um, and one takeaway I uh, had from fall camp is um, that God always has your back. Um, and whenever ever, um, times seem really bad, Mom, I can see you recording me. Um, <laughs> Um, anyway, so God always has you, your back. Um, whenever times like seem really bad for you, um, just letting you know, um, God will always be there with you. Hi, my name is Graham. Some of you may know me. I had from fall camp is that, kind of like Enrique said, people can be fake. They're not always what they seem. So, 
I'm trying my best to live my life not fake and as a real Christian. All right, we'll do one more band, and then we'll keep worshiping, and we'll keep, we'll keep sharing so you guys can think. Uh, hi, my name's Gwen. I'm ninth grade. I'd say the most important thing, the thing I learned the most from camp was actually from a, a fellow cabin mate. Uh, his name is Colby. You might know him. He's over there. But uh, the thing that I learned is that, in a way, the distance we're on Earth is kind of short compared to how everything is, and the only objective in this world is to preach the word of God and bring others to the afterlife with us. You know, and in, in, in the grand scheme of things, nothing else really matters. Hey, for some of you, those of you that do want to share, or those of you who might be on the edge of sharing, there's no judgment here. We just want to hear what God's doing in your life. We want to celebrate it. We want to be for it. So to give you a little bit more spiritual courage. Let's continue worshiping. So you can stand to your feet. You can run to the front. You can do whatever you want, but... Meet with God in this moment, and let's get ready to hear what God's got to say next.
guys, let's stay in this mood though. Let's not talk as we are going back to your seats. And so let's go back to your seats right now and I think Nate's coming up. Anyone else want to share something that God laid on their heart for today? Josh, come on up, man. Just know your name. Um, my name is Josh. I go to high school and a senior, so about to graduate. And going into it, I was just sitting here always stressing about school never really spending as much time as I should have reading the Bible, praying, fill in the blank. And I, for instance, just had Jack come up to me the second day and ask if the Lord was putting anything on my soul to just think about and give to Him. And immediately that came to my mind because I always am stressing about so much work and I just need to give more time to Him than I do to school, sports, whatever. So just know that even though you don't give him as much time as you think you need to, he still loves you no matter what because there is no limit and there is no end to just how much he loves you and it's just beautiful that even though I don't spend as much time as I do, he still waits for me. He knows that in my, in my time, I'll get back to him. Come on up in the back. stories? Right here. Come on up, man. Yeah, leaders, this is open to you, too, if you want to share. So I'm Jack, and uh, I'm the ninth grade small group leader and also the guy that Josh just name dropped. And one thing that I learned, I actually learned this, like, honestly, before we even set off. I got to, I got here early on Friday, and, like, I do tech stuff and everything, and Nate needed help setting up in the, uh, in the student center. And he, I, I said, man, like what a coincidence that I'm here. He said, no, that's a God thing. And I learned from that that if you don't see God in the little things, then you'll never see him in the big things. Um, and right after I like really connected that it was a God thing that I was there, I started to see him in like everything that was happening over the weekend. So that's what I learned from Paul Camp this weekend. Anybody else? Last, last shot? Yeah, come on up. Hi, I'm Natalie, and I normally don't do this stuff, so it's kind of nerve-wracking, but I thought I needed to come up and golf it out of my heart to tell you all that he thinks you're all worth it. Every last one of you, for every mistake you've made, he doesn't really care, as long as you ask forgiveness. He, you are worth it, and everything you do, no matter what, he still loves you. You might think you're a crap human being, but in his eyes, you're not. So that's one thing that I really hit home at Paul Camp. So yeah. Amen. Any last takers? Yes, come on up. Hi, I'm Liberty. I don't do this, 
so I actually did go to fall camp, and it was weird. Even though I've grown up my whole life with Jesus, I've never really been like, okay, it's cool, you know? But the whole message that was at fall camp was that it was the idea of being fake, and that kind of like hit home because I realized that I'm not my own personality. I take like other people's personalities and just like mush it into my own. So I realized that I have to stop being fake and be more real to the people around me and in Jesus Christ. Thank you. We have time for one more. Anyone else just push in to say something? Last chance right here, Luke. All right, I'm Luke. I'm a senior at high school ministry. I did not go to fall camp, actually, but um, I was actually debating this morning whether I wanted to come to student ministry tonight or not, because I was like, you know, I don't want it to be weird. I didn't go to fall camp, you know. I didn't want to kind of miss out on any of that, but a verse God kept putting on my heart throughout today was, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, and bear the burdens of the saints. So I came tonight just to really kind of rejoice with you guys, hear your stories, and there's so much power in testimonies of people and of encouragement from others. So I would just encourage you to what you took at fall camp, keep going deeper with that because it's affecting not just you, but also as you share with other people, whether that's friends at school or even just here, like it affected me tonight, it's moving my heart. I would just say continue in that and keep rejoicing in what God did at fall camp for you. All right. Hey, so look, we're going to sing a couple more songs, and then after we sing songs, we're actually going to do communion together as a group. And so if you don't know what communion is or you're not sure what you think about Jesus, this is a chance for you to, you don't have to participate with us. But for those of you that do want to, there's a couple of buckets up here at the front. When you get up to come and worship, you can grab one, and then I'll lead us through that at the end. But we're going to sing two songs, and one of them is bringing back the song we just sang, which is called Obedience. And that was our camp, th camp theme song. It was, Lord, I'll give you my obedience. I'll give you, I say yes to you and the things you're asking me to because you realize that true, true resistance is surrendering to who God has called and asked us to do. So why don't you guys stand up, come to the front if you want to worship, grab your communion supplies so we can do that in a minute. Let me pray for us. God, we just ask in this last song that you would speak to us, that you would continue to carry the story uh, for those of us that shared at camp and lead us into something new and exciting as we step into our schools differently than we did last week. We love you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. Amen.
and we're so hungry for we'll never find in anything else. That this season of our life where we have oh so many things coming at us, giving us their attention just for something in return, you asked for nothing but obedience. So we give you our obedience. We say yes to you and we ask you to speak to us. Continue to speak to us, not just at camp, but as we move forward. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Or you can have a seat. If you do, grab a communion cup. If you haven't, grabbed one. I was just thinking about how we never get to do communion together as a student ministry. Sometimes we get to do it at worship night and other times. But I love communion for this reason. Okay, let me explain it to you before you take it. You know, when Jesus was meeting with his disciples for the last time, he got up in to the dinner and he's having this feast with his disciples. I don't think they had any clue what was happening next, right? They had just lived life with him. They saw him raise people from the dead, cure incurable diseases, do things that no man has ever done. And I think they really did believe and know that he was Jesus. But I think in that moment, Jesus knew what was coming next. What was coming next was his death so that the brokenness of his bones would heal the brokenness of your lives. That the pouring out of his blood so it would be that we didn't have to pour out our blood. That his perfect life would be lived in and through us. And so when he's sitting there with the disciples, giving them this as a reminder that he actually lived, that he wasn't just a myth or a legend, he wasn't just a story your grandmother told you, but he's alive. He's inside of me, he's inside of some of you. And so every time we take this, we remember that very charge that he said, go amongst the nations, be my disciples, teach everyone to obey everything I've commanded you. Remember, I'm with you always, even to the very end of the age. And so when we do communion, I imagine Jesus looked at those 11 to 12 men, and in their eyes, they were probably freaked out. They're so insecure. They're so scared. They have no idea what's about to happen. And yet Jesus didn't care. He's like, you don't need to have it together to be with me. And so as he's doing this, he's reminding me, it's not you on mission. It's me on mission in you. So let's take this and remember it together. Would you lift the top layer off? There's a little piece of... uh, They call it bread, but I think they're lying. Something not normal, okay? But for the purposes of us tonight, this is a symbolic gesture of the brokenness of Jesus. That in his brokenness, your brokenness would be made whole. So that when you take this, you remember the fact that you are not your own, that your life was given up and the new life that you have in Jesus begins anew. Let's take this together. 
And then the bottom is the juice, it's the blood. It symbolizes Jesus' life that was poured out for you, the blood that was shed so that you could be reconciled to God because you can't do it on your own. You can't behave good enough. You need to accept his life, his forgiveness, his joy. So let's take this together. Let me pray for us one more time. God, we fulfilled what you've asked us to do. We've been obedient to you. We're asking you to help us as we live out this calling of obedience to us. As we go into our schools, as we go into our communities, as we don't know what's happening next, you do. And you tell us that we can do it because we have you living inside us. So speak to us and continue to teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, before we go to small group, you guys know Dave Nichols? Give it up for him. He's our campus pastor. Here we go. I've been going to camp since I was your guys' age, and there were so many times, and I grew up going to camp. I actually believed in Jesus for the first time when I was in 10 years old at camp. And here's what I found every time I came back from camp is that I was, I was like on fire. I was ready to take on the world. I'm ready to give up my life. I'm ready, I'm ready to do anything you ask me to do, Jesus. And then what happens is I go back to school, and guess what? Not everyone around me is thinking the same way that I am. And here's what I would do. I would, I would disconnect what, what God did at camp. I would disconnect what God did at church from the rest of my life. Can I just tell you, Christianity is not a disconnected life of your church life, your church friends, your camp life, your camp friends. It's life in Christ. It's life in Christ at camp. It's life in Christ right here on a Wednesday night. It's life in Christ as you go and you represent Jesus on your campus. It's the same Jesus. I'm reminded of a passage in Hebrews chapter 10. And the author writes, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy places, the holy places that he's talking about is that we get to enter the very presence of God by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. That Basically, he's just saying that Jesus made a way for us to have direct access, connection to the Father. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So he's saying, listen, draw near to God. That same God that draw near to you at camp, that same God wants to draw near to you, not just at camp, not just on Wednesday nights, not just on Sunday mornings. He wants you to draw near to him each and every day. But then listen, he says, as you draw near to God, this is what we do together. And let us consider, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is a habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. You just, a lot of you had an incredible experience at camp, and you're close to God. I don't want to be a downer. Those feelings are going to fade. That doesn't mean that God wandered away. We still draw near to God, but I, I just want you to know, you can't do it alone. You can't. Why do we do small groups in middle school all the way up through because we need each other. We need that person who is in our cabin to look at us in a small group and say, are you walking with Jesus? Well, I don't feel near to God. That's okay. He's still right there near you. You need each other around you. So please, do not let it just be a camp experience. And the way that we carry that camp experience is we gather together and we keep meeting together and we keep encouraging each other. We keep loving each other. And I'll just tell you, loving each other isn't always telling what the other person wants to hear. It's speaking honestly and truthfully the gospel into somebody else's life. So with that, 
We're going to go ahead at this point, break up into small groups, encourage one another, stir up to another to a love and good words. So go off into small groups. I think everyone knows where they're going.